Hi everyone. Today we are going to study a very important protocol in computer networks that is ICMP. It is also known as the Internet Control Message Protocol. The operation of internet is monitored closely by the routers that we all know. But when something unexpected occurs, this event of something unexpected occurring is reported by the ICMP or the Internet Control Message Protocol. That is, whenever something unexpected happens that should not have happened, it is immediately reported by the ICMP. So, ICMP is also used to test the internet. So, it continues continuously tests the internet. About a dozen type of ICMP messages are defined. Now, for various uh, reasons of uh, various purposes there are various kinds of ICMP messages what are these ICMP messages so we will see them as message type and their description so there are several types of messages each message with its description I will explain so the first message type is the destination unreachable that is whenever an ICMP attaches a message uh, named as destination unreachable this means this means that the packet could not be delivered. The packet could not be delivered from the source to the intended destination. So when a subnet or a router cannot locate the destination or when a packet with the destination field bit cannot be delivered because a small packet network stands in a way in such scenarios when a packet is not reachable, cannot be reached uh, to the specific destination this message is used that is the destination unreachable then the next message type is the time exceeded so what is this message basically the time exceeded message is sent when a packet is dropped because its counter has reached zero that is because there is a certain amount of time up to which you can keep the packet in a network and before that time expires that uh, packet must be delivered to the destination because a uh, destination because you cannot continuously keep a packet in a network you need to make room for other packets also and there should be a finite time limit uh, of up to what time you can keep a packet in the network it just cannot keep flying in the network or it just cannot keep roaming in the network so once that time expires or the timer is out then that uh, packet is dropped so this message is for such packets only time exceeded that means the counter hits zero that means the packet has expired now and this event is a symptom that packets are looping there's enormous congestion when there is so much of congestion that the packets are looping and none of them are able to reach their destination and finally their counter hits zero and then they have to be dropped from the network or in uh, some rare cases the timer values are being set too low which is too uh, which is too less of a time uh, for a packet because uh, that time is the minimum required time where a packet has to wait in the network so the timer is either being set too low which is in the rarest of rare cases or otherwise in most of the cases the problem is because of the fact that there is a lot of congestion in the network and the packet is continuously looping and looping and looping it cannot reach its destination and of course there is a time limit up to which it can stay in that network and when that time limit expires the packet is dropped off so the time exceeded message is for such messages that means your counter or the time to leave field hits zero then the next uh, message is your parameter problem now the parameter problem message indicates that an illegal value has been detected in the header field header field um, basically consists of the source uh, address destination and some other control messages something like this so if it is an invalid header field that means it consists of uh, bits or information which should not be there in the header field so basically it consists of illegal value then the parameter problem message is given. This problem basically indicates that there is a bug in the sending host IP software or possibly in the software of the router transited. Then is your source quench message. Now the source quench message uh, was formerly used to throttle hosts that were sending too many packets. 
because there is a, can uh, there should be an upper limit as to how many packets the source can send at any given point of time so usually initially these messages were used to throttle hosts that were sending too many packets at a time when a host received this message it was expected to slow down right so because the send, uh, sender was sending too many packets at a time maybe beyond the capacity of the receiver so upon receiving this message upon receiving the source quench message the host that is the sending host uh, was expected to slow down so it is rarely used anymore because when congestion occurs these packets tend to uh, add more fuel to the uh, fire why because there are already so many packets in the network which have caused congestion and if you send one more packet even if it is a ch choke packet it is a data packet it is a frame kind of thing so sending one more uh, data packet at that point of, point of time would add obviously add fuel to the uh, fire that means it would uh, congest the network even more right so nowadays it is rarely used congestion control in the internet is now done largely in the transport layer it is the responsibility of the transport layer so congestion control is basically taken care of by the transport layer which we will study in detail in the coming videos next is your redirect message now the redirect message is basically used to when a, a router notices that a packet seems to be routed wrong it may happen that a, a router chose a specific part uh, path for a packet and that path was not the optimal or uh, the correct path so when such a thing is noticed when a router notices that the path that was chosen for the packet seems to be wrong so then this message the redirect message is used by the router to tell the sending host about the problem error right so this is this redirect message is for that the, for the uh, routers in, when in case they detect the, uh, that a wrong path has been chosen for a packet next is your echo message so basically the echo and echo reply are two messages which are used to see if a given destination is reachable and alive so echo basically message when is sent to a machine it is basically asking a machine are you alive and are you reachable that means can you get my message so that in future when i send you packets you can receive them and the echo uh, upon receiving the echo message then the destination is expected to send a echo reply when the source sends an echo message the destination in turn is expected to give an echo reply message back so uh, the echo reply message basically the machine to which the uh, source machine had sent a message says that yes i am alive and i am reachable right then is your timestamp request message now the timestamp request and the timestamp reply as you can see there are two messages here timestamp request and timestamp reply so the timestamp request and timestamp reply messages are similar except for the fact that the arrival time of the message and the departure time of the reply are recorded in the reply right so timestamp request is basically same as the echo request but with a timestamp that is you attach a timestamp with every echo request message and the timestamp reply is also same as echo reply but with time stamp so you can think of timestamp requ uh, request as an alternative to echo echo message with an uh, with a timestamp attached to it and you can think of timestamp reply as an alternative to echo reply but with a timestamp attached to it right so this facility is used to measure the network performance by having different messages for different things uh, with the help of the internet control message protocol or the icmp 